Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for clicking on today's podcast. I'm your host, Jacob. This is Ignite Fire, and I'm super excited and honored to have Pastor Dan here. The He's uh, been a mentor. Who is he? <laughs> <laughs> Every, I, everyone that's watching who should probably know who Pastor Dan New. is. Uh, uh, awesome man of God, awesome leader, senior pastor of Pure Heart Church, and one of the leaders of the Better Together movement that's happening yeah. here in Arizona. And just to have you on the podcast is a super honor. And th those who are watching, don't forget this coming Sunday, April the 23rd, we have our Kingdom Music Concert Event, Christian Event on the Field at Arizona Christian University, April the 23rd from 3 to 9 p.m. You're Let's not going to want to miss Let's it. Let's go. So, Pastor Dan. It's good to hang out with you and Sarabi here. <laughs> yeah, really she's, me, she's, she's making sure my hands are nice and clean, giving me a little, little lick, oh, lick back Oh, yeah, here. She's, she's a licker. <laughs> Sarabi. I mean, you read the sign in, in the front. Yeah, beware, says, of dog. beware of dogs. I was expecting like a German Shepherd, <laughs> some kind of Doberman Pinscher. Yeah. And then this golden doodle came walking this up. This little fluff ball. <laughs> yeah, starts, starts licking you up. I go, well, I'm not scared of that dog. See, I was a paper boy growing up, so the ink is still on my fingers. So people have no idea what paper. That's how old I am. I just aged myself Everything, right there, Jacob. Everything's like, online now. Newspapers, ink. What are you talking about? Bring back the A tracks. Yeah, Pastor Dan's so old. He's been at this for decades. You know, it's funny. I I remember when VHS came out oh and I had tons of VHS and I'm like, I remember when CDs were coming out and I was like, I'm never going to be a DVD guy. I'm like, I have nothing but VHS. <laughs> and now I, I don't even have a, a, a VHS player not, anymore. Not, not, neither a DVD either. So. Be kind. Please rewind. Yes. If you're a younger audience, look it they up. They have Google. no idea. They're all clicking <laughs> off right now. They're like, this fucking, this guy's got to be a hundred years old. Google it. Google it. Google it. it. <laughs> It's on there. <laughs> Blockbuster's making a comeback, mm -hmm. I think. I heard some stuff that's Brick happening. Brick and mortar coming back. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, actually, a, we were talking a little bit about that on some podcasts where uh, Hollywood's going down mm -hmm. and uh, Disney is going down. Some of their some of their topics that that they're 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 pushing out into the world yeah. is, is not yeah. making money. Right. And and they're really losing their audience. And I think this is an awesome opportunity for the Christian community, like the chosen and other other um, content creators that are Christian to come out with some amazing content. Well, I feel like they're jumping. There's an old saying in Hollywood called jumping the shark. Mm. Um, it comes this now. I'm really going to date myself here, <laughs> but it comes from Happy Days, which was the sitcom. That was that a great show. That was a great show. Yeah. The, now Google that, young people. Okay. Fonzie. But Happy Days, Fonzie, they, they'd been writing for so long and they were trying to come up with new episodes and be more creative and more cutting edge. And so finally they did this episode where Fonzie jumped a shark in, on skis, water skis, in a freshwater lake. So there's a shark oh in a freshwater lake. And it was like, it was so weird and out there and, yeah. and, and extreme. They call it jumping the shark when, that, when they oh jumped the shark. So I feel like our culture, they're yeah. pushing so much on us these days. It's yeah. starting to jump the shark. It's like, yeah. we've gone so extreme that mainstream America is going, I don't think. I don't think so. Yeah. I may not be as conservative as this or that. I'm not sure about my biblical worldview, but that's yeah. over the edge. I can't go down that road. I think, so. I, I, think I was just reading, too. I think, uh, and I'm not a beer drinker. I don't promote beer drinking, but <laughs> but uh, Bud Light lost, I think, You're like not going to have beer, you know, beer advertisements <laughs> no, at the big, uh, no. the big fire event that's coming up? <laughs> no, fire Come in the on. field. Um, but I think they lost like $4 billion, yeah. like yeah. something crazy. Yeah. And uh, I think something amazing is happening. In the United States, across the world, uh, just some shifts are happening. I mean, I see, I, I seen that uh, Jesus Revolution movie, and if you ha guys haven't watched it, I recommend it. Lonnie Frisbee, yeah. uh, Chuck Smith, and uh, uh, was it Greg Laurie? Greg Laurie, uh, yep. amazing, absolutely amazing movie. And uh, I left crying. I was like, man, let's I have, go, a, I let's have a good see. friend on our our team, um, Bill Stewart, Pastor Bill, and he's he's in his mid seventies, and he actually grew up in that area in California. Oh, and so yeah. he knows exactly where that was located. He was a part of that. Yeah. And he went to the movie and just cried the whole time. He said it was so accurate, so true to what went on yeah. uh, in that season, that revival. He said it was so powerful, so right on. Actually, I was going to have Bill come on and, and share a little bit about Lonnie you Frisbee should. and stuff. We should cut this one right here <laughs> and just have Bill come and finish. He'll yeah, do great. He said uh, his his uh, meeting him was was pretty awesome. Yeah. And no one really knew that you know it was going to be as big as it was, which is crazy. But uh, what what an amazing movement! So tell me what well, what's going on with you? What's what's happening at Pure Heart? I mean, you guys are just, involved in so much in the community uh, that it's just crazy. Just got back from Israel, 
Um, love that long flight. That was a blast. But, How long um, was the flight? It's long. It's long. It's. Uh, I think on the way back they add two hours because of that. Uh, the time difference. Current wind current or whatever it is headwinds. Oh. So yeah, it's a. It was a fifth like a fourteen hour flight from Tel Aviv back to, <laughs> to, to Washington D.C. and then another six hours back to Phoenix and I was exhausted. I could didn't sleep for two days. So it was awesome. But um, no, it was, it was beautiful. We took almost 50 people from our church. We had about 50 go. We're actually going to take another trip next year, next spring, um, because there's just so many people that want to go. And it's yeah. such a powerful experience, Jacob, to be to walk where Jesus walked. We're on the Sea of Galilee. We're on this boat in the Sea of Galilee. And yeah. you just, they cut the engine. You're just sitting out there. You're floating. And you just, Jesus walked right here. Like he walked yeah. on this water. And all the stories that I've read growing up, they come to life. And we were in this area called Magdala, and it's... Um, in Magdala, there is it's where Mary Magdalene was delivered from seven demons, oh, where Jesus dang. delivered her from seven demons. But what's so powerful about Magdala, it's a brand new discovery that is actually a Catholic uh, retreat center there. And they mm-hmm. started digging to build this retreat center, and they came across a first century synagogue. Oh, dang. A first century synagogue. So here's these stones of this first century synagogue where you know Jesus went from synagogue to synagogue teaching. Yeah. You know he was on these stones. He stood right here and it's just Man. such a powerful experience. I'm gonna have to sign up for that. Oh, you got to go with us. It, <clears throat> I mean, we we last Sunday night we gathered with about about mm, two thirds of the group, mm-hmm. and we were gonna meet for like an hour and a half and just share stories about what God showed yeah. us while we were in Jerusalem, in Israel. Hours later. Like oh, almost three man. hours later, we got done. So just much people revelation. People crying, opening up, sharing their hearts. And they said, they said this Easter was the most powerful Easter they've ever had because they had been to Jerusalem. Oh, man. You know, you go to the garden tomb and you're, yeah. you're in that area of near Golgotha. And you, it's just, it's, it's amazing. I, I can't so, even imagine just yeah, seeing some it, of the pictures. It's so powerful. So powerful. So it was, a, it was a great trip for me. You know, actually for me, one of the, I go, um, I, I get to be, our church has grown so much, and praise God for that, and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And you know, we now have tons of staff members and, and things. And so, I spend so much of my life now, Jacob, in meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, dealing mm-hmm. with all kinds of business and financial things. And of course, yeah. I get to preach on the weekend, which is fantastic. But I don't get to do as much of what I first signed up for ministry for, which is just to be with people mm-hmm. and love people and encourage people. So it was nice on the trip because I got to just be. Yeah. 50 people's pastor. Wow. And not, you know, do the whole mega church thing. You know? yeah, yeah. Which is great. Like all yeah. so many pastors want to lead mega churches, but there's a there's a shadow side to it too. So yeah. but it was just good to just be able to sit and listen to people's stories and pray for them and talk to them. And now we like we have like 23 pastors on our team and stuff. So I don't wow. get to do that as much. I get to I'm much more involved in different decisions that have to be made. And it was just good to do that. But the, yeah. so I, I was able to pastor and just be with our people at our church, some of the folks at our church. God showed me a couple of really powerful things when I was there. The first big moment for me was um, we're on Mount Carmel. Mm-hmm. So this is where, you know, Elijah has the battle with the prophets of Baal. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. One of my favorite stories. And, I'm, and I didn't, that was, of all the sites we went to that day, that was the site that, yeah, it was kind of exciting. I was looking forward to it, but I didn't expect, didn't have high expectations for that site. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I'm sitting in this little church that's there on that site, and I, I was reflecting and praying and thinking, and... um all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit started working on my heart, and he started. I, I knew. I, I kind of. I've been walking with the Lord long enough. I know when He's starting to download something into yeah. my spirit. You know that. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I need to pay attention to what's going on here. <laughs> so, I go up top. I'm at the lookout. I'm looking out over the valley, uh, down off the mountaintop there, and I have a really. Um, there's a lot of other pastors that are much more talented. I'm as a teacher, great preachers. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know. You got a there's, gift, though. Uh, you got a gift. I, I'm not trying to be extra humble. I, there's just, there's just brilliant, brilliant teachers out there, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I've never been that guy. I'm a storyteller. I love mm-hmm. people. I have really, Jacob, one strong gift, and it's mercy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And God gave me this mercy gift, and it's, it's, it's. I love people, and yeah. I care deeply about the broken and the hurting. You know, I love your your sign right here from First Corinthians chapter sixteen, yeah. verse fourteen. Do everything in love. I just yeah. I. No pun intended. I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm standing there on this mountain, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, whispers into my spirit, and He says, "I need you to be bolder." Ooh. I need you, son, to be bold. I need you to. St- I need you to speak up more about what's going on in our culture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, um, but don't lose your heart of mercy. Yeah, yeah. And so this last weekend, I was teaching, and I, I felt like this last week is probably one of the strongest messages I've I've ever had, and I. It was because of that mountaintop experience. Wow. And I feel like the Lord just said, 
And so I, I, I was thinking a lot about John, the, the dis- disciple John, and his relationship with Jesus. It was so warm. And John describes Jesus, you know, in John chapter one, he says, you know, here's my bit, here's how he describes Jesus. He came full of grace and truth. And, truth. Yeah. and I really feel like, Jacob, that's the thing that our culture needs. It's starting yeah. to wake up yeah. some of these things that are happening that we know are so out of bounds of what God wants for our lives, so out of bounds mm-hmm. with the biblical worldview. Mainstream America started to go, that's just too much. And we talked yeah. about that earlier, right? Yeah. But I think that it's a it's a great opportunity for us as a church to be full of grace and full of truth. Yeah. And it's really yeah. hard to be that these days. Oh, yeah. It really is. I, I know churches right now, I mean, matter of fact, if you really want to grow a church these days, just get up and preach truth, man. Just bring it. And there's yeah. people that are hungry for that. And there's... Yeah. I hate to say it this way, it sort of may upset some folks on your podcast, but there's a lot of angry Christians out there. There is. No, there is. <laughs> there's a lot of there angry is. Christians, and they're going to, I want to go to church that's going to bring the truth, and I, and I get that. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. totally get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also grace, and grace says, I'm going to love you, and I'm going to honor you, and I'm going to respect you Yeah. no matter what. Mm-hmm. I'm going to respect the fact that you're made in the image of God, no matter what you're doing to that image. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going I'm to love you. I'm going to honor yeah. you. I'm going to respect you. But I'm also going to stand for what the Bible says, yeah. not my own made-up truth, but what the Bible says is truth. And I yeah. think that we have to as churches, and this is, the, this is the biggest thing I brought home from Israel, is that on Mount Carmel, you know, where Elijah has this moment with the prophets of Baal, and, and just like, you know, I need to be bolder like Elijah. Yeah. But yeah. I also don't want to lose that heart of mercy that God's given me, and I want to be full of grace yeah. and full of truth. So this last weekend, I was just, you know, walking through, you know, what God's Word says about identity and gender and these types of things, but at the same time saying... But we want to process with you. We want to walk with you. We're going to still love you. Even if you reject what we believe, Yeah, we will still love you. You light me up on social media, say bad things about me. I am not going to respond in kind. Yeah. yeah. And I see that even Christians are just like going nuts on social media. They really Same are. things these days. It's like, they really are. Guys, don't excuse your rudeness for being salt and light. No, no. You know, we need to speak the truth, but we have to speak the truth in love. And it's so hard to figure that out. I mean, actually, that's one of the conversations I'm going to have with a group of pastors here next week that I'm gathering with is how do we in our churches, how do we be full of grace and full of truth? Mm-hmm. How do we live mm-hmm. that out in mm-hmm. this world? So, No, I think you're, you're, you're spot on. That, that's something that that I believe like there's a, there's a lot of so-called prophets that are always bringing judgment, judgment, yeah. judgment. And hey, you know what? I, I, don't, I believe that all judgment past, present, and futures was placed upon Jesus on the cross. Amen. So there's the mer- there's that mercy, but yet when we were looking at the epistles, Paul did draw a line saying yep. that we, we live a moral life, and that's because of the, the new creation that God's placed in us. Amen. And there has to be that grace, and there has to be that truth. And uh, that's why uh, we really believe in ACU right now and what they're doing. I mean, they're, they're under the fire right they now are. because of uh, what's going on with the school district. But... But I, I was sitting down with Pastor Travis from ACU, and it was really neat. We we got to have a bunch of pastors that come come for this breakfast, and he started explaining what was happening. And he said, you know, we don't want to hate anybody, and we don't want to, you know, uh, judge anybody or do any of right. these things. But we can't move off the morality that we stand on, and we're not going to hide it. And if we're going to be persecuted for that, we're going to stand and we're going to stand strong. You know, and I, I was like, man, just just listening to how he was explaining the things. And we all prayed together as a group and prayed for the school district, prayed for everyone that was on the team uh, that that is is coming against ACU for for their moral standings. And uh, but but what what in what a, a demonstration of saying, hey, we're going to be we're going to stand in truth, but we're also going to be merciful to those who are not agreeing with what we stand on. It's a great opportunity for us right now to show the love of Christ, mm-hmm. to truly do what Jesus says. Pray for those who persecute you. Yeah. You know, and, love and, those and <laughs> love those who hate you. It, we have a great opportunity to do that. Yeah. We yeah. really, really do, if we can keep that perspective. And it's not easy. No. <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine the other day of, of a situation that, that I'm currently in, and, you know, getting despitefully used and knowing it, but then still wanting to bless and, and, and be that love. As I was, as I was, I was I was thinking of the situation. I felt the hot sauce running up my legs. <laughs> like I'm like I don't want to be love right yeah, now towards no. them. You know I don't want to. I'm like come on. And then like three of my friends were like, "You got to do what the Bible says. Yeah. You got to love them." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like come on. 
one of the, th- the thoughts I had here recently was this whole idea of grace and truth. If you're getting ready to preach a message, or if, as teachers, or, or you're doing, leading a small group, or whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. and you have an opportunity, or even a conversation, if you have an opportunity to go into conversation, and it's, you know, you have a, someone in your, like, I have a very good friend of mine who's transitioning from being a girl to a boy, mm-hmm. and um, she's been isolated in her home for Mm. for probably a decade. Yeah. And she's got so much going on, so much pain. And during the pandemic, a counselor told her that the reason she's dealing with her anxiety is because um, she's really a man and not a woman. And so oh, yeah. and the thing that breaks my heart for my friend is I've been I've been trying to introduce her to Jesus for so long, and um, she just keeps pushing back and pushing back and pushing back. And yeah. um, the hard part is that she's still trapped in her home. Mm-hmm. You know, she's mm-hmm. still struggling. Um, and even though she's gone through so much change in her physical body, what's going on the inside, she's still wrestling with. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to encourage her and love her through this season of her life mm-hmm. and not turn my back on her. But I have a great opportunity because she gets so, she gets so angry and so upset at Christians and well, Christians say this and Christians do this. And, and I get that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it's difficult out there. Yeah. Um, but we still have to love. We can still respect and honor people. And I, I tell her, I love you. I respect you. And clarity is kindness. I don't mm-hmm, have to mm-hmm. agree with yeah. what you're doing. I can still love you and not accept everything that you believe and think. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we we have to be able to do that. Absolutely. And I think that this is uh this is one of the moments in time, just like the Jesus Revolution, not that there was a demonstration of God wherever the people were coming together to honor the word of God. And there was that truth that was being spoken. God honored his word and and performed signs and miracles and wonders. And, uh, and I believe that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities no. in high places. And I think that he, uh, the God of this world, Satan, has covered the eyes and the ears of so many people that it's the truth and the grace of God that it will uncover that veil and they'll come into the light. You know, some, some won't because their deeds are evil. They don't want, they don't want to, uh, to change. But there's so many that are just so deceived that when that, when that power comes... It, 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 it radically does what we can't do on our own, you know? Yeah. It's so hard in this world today because when we get punched, our natural reaction <laughs> is to yeah. punch back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you, if you keep, if you can't move forward if you keep punching back, yeah. you just can't. You can't move forward. And the kingdom of God needs to be keep moving forward. Yeah. And if we spend all our time as Christians punching back, we can't move forward. Yeah. We're going to stay stuck. And so, yes, let's stand for truth. Let's let's know what we believe. Let's be willing through relationship, share that conviction and that truth. But let's do it with grace. Let's do that in love. You know, we have, um, you're speaking about ACU and what they've been going through with Washington Elementary School District. So we have a, uh, we started a ministry many, many years ago now called School Connect. Uh-huh. Oh, so yeah, yeah. it's uh, probably, I think right now we're in a thousand schools, public schools mm-hmm. in 15 cities across 14 oh, 15 man. cities across the nation right now it's huge and there's almost 900 churches that are partnered with it serving the schools yeah and so you know washington elementary school district was one of the first districts that we served in oh wow we, we actually we serve at every single school yeah in the washington elementary school district and so you know we start hearing these things that are going on these different things and so tracy beale who leads that ministry was telling me you know I'm, I'm trying to find ways to keep building bridges with the school district keep loving the school district, but our whole goal is to just wash the feet of our schools, yeah, to love yeah. them and to serve them. And so we've just told them, hey, here's where we stand. You yeah. know, we, we we love Jesus. Yeah. We love yeah. Jesus. Yes, we do. We love Jesus. We know yeah. you don't, but it's okay. But yeah. there's so many good Christian principals and leaders in the Washington Elementary School oh, District. Yeah. And they're heartbroken about oh, what's yeah. going on with the superintendent yeah. situation. I mean, with the um, school board situation. Yeah. So they're heartbroken about that. But... At the same time, we can't abandon public schools because we go, oh, look what happened. Yeah. And, and, and there's so, so many different news agencies. They, they want to focus on these one, this one story or this story. There's so many other stories happening within our school districts, especially public schools, yeah. where there's men and women trying to do beautiful, good things. Oh, yeah. And so oh, yeah. we just said, hey, we're not going to stop loving you. Yeah. Even if you say we can't be here anymore, we're going to find ways to serve the schools. Yeah. Because we think that's what Jesus would do. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And, and it's hard right now in our culture to to love our culture but here's the truth jesus did mm-hmm. for god so loved the world he sent his only son yes yes and here's the deal if jesus is able to be grace and truth yeah then if he lives in me yeah i'm able to be grace and truth absolutely it's funny before you came i actually was in the kitchen 
and I was uh, Googling, did Jesus really wash the feet of Judas before he betrayed him? <laughs> and I, I was Can you imagine a, that moment? Just a random thought. And, yeah. and I'm like, he knew he was going to betray him. Exactly. He knew his heart. He knew that there was one in his camp yeah. from the beginning and yet still loved him and still washed his feet with the rest of the disciples. And don't you love that scene? I was just listening to this this morning, the Gospel of John, where they come to the garden to arrest Jesus. And, and he says, I am he, and they all fall down. Boom. I just love that. It's almost like Jesus was saying, let me just show you what I could do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know I'm going to surrender. Yeah. I, I, I I didn't have to, Yeah. but I, it was just, yeah. I love that little moment of power, oh, yeah. like where they all drop, and yeah. he's like, and they ask him again, and he says, I, I told you I am he, and he goes with them. I'm just going, <laughs> I kind of dig that moment right Oh, there. yeah. You know? Well, and you know, it's funny, because if, if I, I, I love that moment, too, because Otherwise, they probably would have took Peter for cutting that guy's ear off. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Peter was over there trying to yeah. trying to fight everyone, and and God just boom explodes with this power. I yeah. could call twelve legions. Yeah, you know, but I'll go with you. I'm going to surrender. Just let these ones go. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Truth and grace is an interesting thing in our culture right now. Loving people that don't love us as Jesus followers is uh, we have a great opportunity yeah. to exercise graduate level love. Oh. <laughs> Doctorate level love, <laughs> and that's and that's part today. of that being bold too that you're talking yeah. about. You know, it's it's so much. It's 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 easy to get up and cause a controversy, and it's harder to to stand up and love somebody that is not being lovable. Yeah, you know, and that's part. I that, I think that 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 comes into that being bold too, and then and not bending to the society, but setting the standards for the society. That's yes. another part of being being I, I think being being bold um and and doing that in love because you're really setting the the example for other Christians to say, you know what, I can do it different. Yeah. <laughs> so well, if you, you look, Jesus' harshest words were towards the church. It was yeah, towards right. the religious leaders. Yeah. You know, but he still truth and grace. So the woman who's caught in the act of adultery, which always kind of blows my mind because I'm going, where was the guy? <laughs> you know, just yeah. in that situation. Last time I that. <laughs> It takes, two. It, takes it takes two. It takes two. I mean, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about that adultery thing, but you know, it yeah, takes two, yeah. from what I understand. So you know, and, and so he's writing on the ground, and you know, scholars have always like speculated what he was yeah, writing. Yeah. It's like he's, maybe he wrote, "Where's the guy?" I mean, or, or wrote the guy's name or something. Who knows? You know, we don't know what he wrote on the ground, but um, or all their sins that they had committed. I don't know. And yeah, but I love yeah. when everybody leaves, and then he looks at the woman. And he says, "Where are your, those who condemn you?" Mm. And then these words are powerful. I mean, she was caught in the act of adultery. Yeah. It's one of the Ten Commandments. It was punishable by death. And he says, yeah. then neither do I condemn you. But then he says, but go and sin no more. Yeah. So it's grace yeah. and it's truth. Yeah. And I, it, there's, we've, I'm just, this is the biggest thing I'm growing in right now is, Lord, how do I, where, where do I speak truth? Because clarity is kindness. Where am I, where do I need to be clear? Yeah. And how do I be clear about what your word says for, for this life? Because I believe that is love. Yeah. Because you can't have love without truth and truth without love. They yeah. got to go together. If someone's heading towards a cliff, you want to tell them, "Hey, you're them. heading towards a cliff yeah. here. This could kill you." Yeah, yeah, that's love. And at the same time, because because the grace part comes a little more easily for me. Yeah. But as I was starting to say earlier, you know, if you're getting ready to do a message, you're getting ready to wrestle through something, you have to have a com difficult conversation with someone. You know, um, ask yourself this question: Are you more excited to tell them? Uh, the truth about what they're doing wrong? Mm. Or are you more excited to let them know you still love them no matter what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. So when you look at the, because we're either one or the other, which shows me where I need to be more full. Yeah. Right? Because for me, I get excited to let people know I love them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I can't wait to let people know I care about you. I'm with yeah. you. I'm for you. Even if you don't agree with me, I, I thrive on that. I mm -hmm, love that. Mm -hmm. Where I've got to grow is being bolder in speaking the truth. Gotcha. Isn't that great to hear a pastor say that? <laughs> <laughs> um. But I think we all need to wrestle through that question. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I, st I started telling that story earlier, and I got distracted, so sorry about that. That's no, what happens no. when you turn 53. <laughs> well, you're looking good for 53, well, man. Yeah, I've been working out. Yeah, no, that's part out. of it. You know, I was actually listening to another podcast, and they were talking about deliverance and stuff. And uh, he was like, hey, you know, you can get delivered, but you got to take care of your body. You got to you yeah. got to get your mind right. You got to renew yourself. You got <laughs> I've lost almost 80 pounds in the last year. Oh, man, that yeah. is awesome. 80 pounds. And it's um, I've wrestled with my weight my since I was two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I 
I had a, a horrible relationship with food. You know, I, I used food to comfort. You know, if I was if I was sad, I ate. If I was happy, I ate. But I really, yeah. used, I ate my emotions a lot. Mm. And so I was super unhealthy. I was almost 300 pounds. And um, at one point, about two, two, nine, 285, something like that. So I was 205, this, oh, 204 dang. this morning. 204.3. Yeah. Two, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to call it 204. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's been a huge victory in my life. You and feel better? Oh, I feel great. I feel great. And and part of that transformation came, we, we've we adopted a little girl. Her name's Olivia, a little baby oh, girl. Dang. Oh, she's something else. She's, um, we were kinship guardians for her. She was born on fentanyl oh, dang. in December of 2022. Oh, dang. And so her mom checked into a hospital who's a family member of ours, a relative of ours, my wife's side. Uh-huh. Um, she's been on the streets and she's been dealing with drugs since she was probably 17, 18 oh, years old. Man. But she checked into a hospital in Scottsdale, um, had this baby born on fentanyl. And the caseworker said it's the worst case, probably one of the worst cases you've ever seen. Mm. He said, I have no idea how this child's alive. Wow. No idea. Well, we know. Yeah. She's, she's an absolute miracle. Yeah. God has a great plan for Olivia's life. And so a little Olivia Rose was on morphine for 29 days in ICU, mm-hmm. coming off of fentanyl. And um, and she's just a little miracle. But uh, when I first held her in my arms, I felt the, you know, once that was over, I fell in love with her. Yeah. My, my wife was, she was all on board. My wife's like, we're going to adopt this baby. And I'm like, we should pray. About yeah. that. Like, there should be, are you sure? <laughs> Abraham and Sarah, do we, are we, you know, are you sure we should adopt this baby? And, 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 and it's so a huge step. It's we had, a- we had some folks in our church that we would be great parents. And I remember saying to Nicole, I said, I remember saying to the Lord, actually, I said, if there's any other way, right? If there's, yeah. any, if there's anybody, if there's another, there's got to be a younger family out there that can do this, you know? So then we found out that she left a note, the mom left a note saying that she would not allow the baby to go to anybody but us. Oh, damn. And Nicole Stephan. And so I was like, well, there's my answer. But I held her and I fell in love with her. But then after a couple of weeks, we had her home with us and the Lord started working on my heart again. And and he just, um, I started thinking about when I'm 70 years old, uh huh, Olivia will be 18. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I want to be here. Yeah. I want to be healthy for her. Yeah. And I want to be strong for her. And so God, we are loving her. And everybody says, oh, what a wonderful thing you guys are doing for Olivia. But God has used this little girl to change my life. That's awesome. Changed my life. Um, you sometimes you need a mission bigger than yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she's kind of become that. I kind of became comfortable in my level of serving. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe some people out there listening they can relate to that. You you get kind of used to your level of kind of what you do, and and does and, it yeah. does it almost become like a routine? It almost? does. Yeah, it's like in it's like in yeah. training, weightlifting, and stuff like that. You know, you. You cross train. You have to change things up to confuse mm-hmm. muscle confusion, so yeah. that you can keep growing, getting stronger. Yeah. Because you can get used to the same workout. Oh yeah. And then you stop growing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it's like some people who maybe they, they drive a truck or something like that for a living, and they do a lot of lifting. Well, but they're still overweight because their bodies are used to that same mm-hmm. routine every day. They became used to that. Yeah. So you got to mix it up and add add extra cardio and different things. So, you know. For me, serving Olivia was next level. Wow. Like, I went back to changing diapers. I was up early. And, you know, yeah, like, yeah. This, I was not ready for this, you know. And it's not like a grandbaby, you know, because no, yeah. you send them home, right? You know, <laughs> she is home. There's no sending her anywhere. She's home. And so that level of, that new way of serving has changed me in so many ways. Wow. And then the discipline of wanting to be healthy for her has poured into every area of my life. I'm glad you shared that actually, because uh, my wife is 33, mm. I'm 37, and we were both teen parents. Okay. And so my daughter's going to be 21, her son's about to be 18, and she wants to have a baby together. And I was like, <laughs> the kids are almost like, we're like almost my, done. My babe. daughter's Come out, on. and my son is getting ready to get there, and I'm like, yeah. what? And uh, I was actually of all messages. I was listening to a message of Job, and and uh, and 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 the message was that his his later years were better than his younger yeah. years. And I was thinking because we were both teen parents that it was really difficult as a teen parent. It, there was a lot of trauma. I wasn't walking right with the Lord, and so we had to deal with the consequences of having a a, a kid or kids that didn't grow up in a Christian household and having to deal with that. And I'm like man, I don't want any more kids, you know? But then I'm like, wait a minute. They are a blessing. Yeah. 
and and my later years could be better than how it started, you know? I'm a better dad to Olivia yeah. than I was to our three biological biological children. Uh, I'm a better yeah, dad. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a better dad. I hands down, I was not the best dad when the kids were little. Yeah. I'm at a next level now. And you will be that. I mean, if God puts it on your heart and yeah. it's what you guys are supposed to do, you got to be in agreement on that with the yeah, Lord. Yeah. But I, I'll tell you, Olivia changed my life. And I, 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 you'll be a great dad. That's, that's a new awesome. dad. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm a new dad. And then my, I just found out we're having our first grandchild in June. Um, I, oh, I found that out a few months ago. But, um, well, congratulations. So, yeah. so I'm going to be a grandpa <laughs> for the first time and a new dad a new in the dad. same year. <laughs> Giddy up. Only only God. Only, only God. God. It's the story of my life right there. <laughs> Crazy stories. No, that's that's awesome. But that that's whole awesome. serving thing, you know, serving at another level, I just encourage anybody out there, if you've become comfortable in your level of service to God, mm. and just pray, Lord, what, what do you want to stretch me? You yeah. Know, and don't, there may be something that God's bringing you along your path that it's going to be way outside of what you thought. Yeah. My wife and I went on a big old nine week break uh-huh like a sabbatical we tra- actually traveled the two of us just for three weeks we prayed together we we built a whole plan because we we're getting ready to be empty nesters okay so we had yeah, this yeah. entire plan <laughs> this was in 2021 okay an entire plan of what we were going to do like a year later that whole plan god just went shh, shh, just tore the pages Changed up, and said, it up. It's, yeah that was a great plan what is that scripture says we plan and god laughs you know yeah, it's like yeah. yeah okay that's good You're good like, plan this is what i'm gonna do god. this is a good plan like, Dan. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you're 70 you'll get to get back to that plan <laughs> maybe 72 when she's three when four when she's done in college yeah that's that's no that's awesome though and uh and how how often does God change our plans? What we think is going to happen, and yeah. and uh, and and you know, like like with, with this event that's coming up on Sunday, this is our our first real big event, and with all the things that are going, I'm like, I don't know if I want to keep doing like mm. this stuff. Like this is crazy. I, I was I was actually getting feelings of like throwing in the towel, yeah. and and then. Uh, but then God kept reminding me of prophecies, of things that were spoken, of all this stuff, and I'm like, okay you know what, God, you place that desire in my heart to keep reaching as many people as I can. Yeah. I'll keep going. It, nothing, nothing comes without the discipline yeah. of building upon building, of a, a building, changing, growing, and whatever that looks like, we, we can't lose if we keep going. Yes. And, and persistence. I was listening to another guy and it's another, po- I've been listening to podcasts like crazy, but he was like, and he's not even a Christian, but he's like, persistency is the only cheat code. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? What if Christians took that perspective to say, we serve a God that can't fail us. If we just stay persistent and don't stop, we'll always walk in victory. I think one of the things that we lack as just as Americans is grit. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> we lack grit. Yeah, we we just we just give up too easy. So I'm super proud of you, Jacob. I'm proud well, of what you. God's doing thank in your you. heart, your passion for evangelism. I mean, you and I've talked a little bit about this. I did some studying. It was actually that summer that I was traveling with my wife uh-huh. um, on the, like all the different revivals and Great Awakenings. Oh, so in the 1700s, man. Jonathan Edwards, the first Great Awakening. Yes, 23 percent of that little hamlet outside of Massachusetts, where the revival, where the the Great Awakening first started. 23% of that city, that little town, came to Jesus in that revival. Wow. If 23% of Maricopa County came to Jesus, that's 1.2 million people. That's huge. Wouldn't it be amazing to see 1.2 million people oh my gosh, yeah. come to see Jesus in our yeah. city? To, yeah. I, I, that's what I've been praying for as another great awakening. Yeah. And I also love your heart for, not just for evangelism, which matters greatly, but the method in which you're reaching out through unity. Yeah, yeah. Wanting to do, not go alone. We say it all the time at Pure Heart. That's why we do school ministry mm-hmm. with other churches. That's why we, everything yeah. we do is with other churches because we don't want to go alone. It's about the kingdom big K, not just Pure Heart. Yeah, um, yeah. And we say all the time, if we were gone tomorrow, would our community miss us? Mm-hmm. And we also say we don't go alone because it's not just what we do in life. It's who we do life with that matters. And yeah. I love doing life with other leaders in other churches. That's so awesome. the fact that you're wanting to bring leaders and bring churches together and partner yeah, to reach yeah. out to our city, I love that. Yeah, Because yeah. unity is hard. It is. There's That's a reason enough. when Jesus prayed that we'd be one, that the world would believe. It's one of the greatest miraculous signs is oh the unity, especially among Christians. Yeah, yeah, We are so divided right now. We're divided politically. We're divided. 
Anyway, yeah. Don't get me started. So that'd be mm-hmm. another podcast. We well, won't go down that No, road. you're... I'll and, get too fired up and then I'll have to take an <laughs> offering. So. No, you're absolutely right. Well, <laughs> and, and, uh, but, and, and what's interesting with what's happening in the world is the darkness is getting darker. And it's yeah. causing some persecution towards the church. But what I what I believe since the beginning of the church started is the persecution brings that unity because we're like, hey, we can't keep fighting each other and and then fighting the world. We need to take a stand together and and uh and and resist the enemy that's coming to divide and conquer. You know, it's almost like the the lonely sheep is gonna get devoured by the wolf unless he's part of the you know, with the shepherd and the flock. Only 13% of this city goes to church on a given weekend. Really? There is no reason for competition among churches. Wow. 13%. 13%. There, there is, and this, that was a pre-COVID number. And th- it's probably and, and worse and now. Arizona's uh, blowing up like crazy millions right now. Millions millions of people. Holy moly. Only 13%. I mean, there, it, there's just no reason. I mean, we should be focusing on how do we come together yeah, as yeah. churches to reach the city. We yeah. really should be. We need to be united and it's it's not easy. Yeah. It, it lots of things want to divide us right now, but yeah. We're trying to go out of our way um as a church to find ways to connect with other yeah. churches and other leaders to say let's make a difference. That's awesome. That and that, and that was part of the whole reason of 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 doing these these events cuz I I know there's a whole lot of people that won't step in foot or step foot into a church, right. but they'll come, they'll come to, to kind of something cool, something something that's happening that that the that the, that the community is invited to, yep. and then they get hit with the gospel, and then all of a sudden now we're not a church, so we're like, hey, we need to get these people plugged in somewhere. Right. So let's partner with the local churches so we can get them filled up, and then we'll just keep going like a big net, catching the fish, and then and then bringing them to the church to get cleaned up. <laughs> There, I heard a guy say recently, "There's four, there's four churches for every McDonald's in our city." Oh dang! There's a <laughs> lot of churches, and and there's a lot of McDonald's. <laughs> oh there's a lot gosh. of McDonald's too, but there's but McDonald's. I mean, anyway, there's four churches or McDonald's, and I, I, I just want to see the church get stronger. Yeah, and yeah. I think one of the reasons that we're not strong, as strong as we should be, mm-hmm. is because we're so divided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a house that's divided is going to fall. It's it going to be weak. Stand. You can't stand. And I think that I think unity needs to be one of the main priorities of every pastor in our city. Mm. Finding ways to get outside of their four walls and connecting with other leaders in our city. Yeah. And be in relationship with each other. Yeah. Love each other. Encourage each other. Pray with each other. Spur each other on. Yeah. And our churches, if we get healthier in our relationships with each other as pastors, mm-hmm. our churches are going to get healthier. Oh. It's going to spill in. It's going to spill into the life of our church. Because speed of the leader, speed of the team. Yeah. You know, if the pastor's healthy, if the leaders are healthy, the church gets healthy. Yeah, yeah. And one of the reasons we're not is we're not connected. Mm, no, I think you're you're absolutely right. And then and then bringing that that aspect too of of grace and truth. It, it, once the unity comes in, and then everyone is functioning like a body. Yeah. And there's one voice. It's one message. One you know under one body, preaching what Christ would be preaching. Um, I think it'll have a huge effect politically. Um, it, it'll have a huge effect on society, have a huge effect on every aspect of life. I, there's this thing called take, it was it the seven mountains, I believe of yep. influence. Yeah. I mean, we could affect so many different things just from the unity piece and standing as one. That's huge. It's truth. That's huge. Yeah, it's truth. And so, man, this that that this is this is a a great podcast. Oh my gosh! Thank you for coming today. It's my and honor. Just, my man. honor to be here. Thank you. Yeah, just it's nice to just come and share your heart <laughs> and just sit down and hopefully, let the Lord lead. Hopefully, something made sense. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> As I get older, I ask this question all the time. Like that makes sense. Like well, that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. No, I'm teasing. But yeah, it's uh, that unity piece is 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 just vital. It's absolutely vital, but I'm proud of you, Jacob. I'm proud of what well, God's put you. on your heart. Thank it's an you. honor to sit with you today and share my heart. It was good to be back from Israel. Good to be oh, yeah. home oh, with yeah. my family again. Um, and I'm excited about what God's doing in our city. Amen. And you know, we got, we actually got, uh, it's so crazy. We just put, uh, inv- invitations everywhere. And I think there's like 20 people from pure heart that are coming out nice. to just help Let's go. and, and, uh, uh, sit on the field and pray for people and help people. And, um, there's a few other small churches that were coming together and I'm like, man, this is, this is pretty, pretty awesome. And, uh, and then I was talking to, uh, for those who, who don't know, uh, one of the main guys that we're bringing was from kingdom music. And this guy's blowing up the Christian hip hop scene, like just nice. crazy. 
And uh, he wasn't able to come, but he's sending two other guys from his label. And we were talking after one of our podcasts with him. And he's like, we know, you know, when I when I fully recover, I'd love to partner with you guys and do something like this and bring unity to, to all the churches. Because I think he, he hit uh, number one for Christian Hip Hop Artists of the Year on Apple iTunes for 2022. Wow. Two. That's big. Yeah. That's big. And so, um, and I was just, I was like, well, I'm going to, this, it's funny, the, uh, ACU, they're like, who is this guy? So they look him up and on, on his overall YouTube channel, he has like 300 million views or something like that. <laughs> and they're like, uh, Jake, uh, how many people are coming out here? Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. I'm like, well, you know, we can cap it. I think we can do 1500. You know, our field is only this big. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we only have enough parking for this many people. So, uh, so yeah, they got a little nervous, but it's going to be okay. ACU, we're going to, we gonna got, be all right. We got about 80 volunteers coming together and Excellent. we got some security. Um, some, uh, a retired police officer was, was, uh, uh coming to uh, lead our, our, our security team. And I think there's four other officers that are going to be there and, right. and uh, people are going to be directing people for the traffic. And I'm like, I'm like, God, there's no way that I was able to do this. And he's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, let's keep we'll keep going. <laughs> I love that statement. I live every day of my life that way. I, I'm, I'm leading something at Pure Heart that I never thought I would lead. And yeah. I'm not just saying that to yeah. you know, be humble. It's just I'm a little farm boy from Illinois. Well, smaller farm boy than I used to be. <laughs> um, but. You know, I, I know where I come from. I know my background. I know the, the mistakes I've made with my life and, and yeah. God's grace on my life. So um, to get to lead what I get to lead is like, I know this is God. It's awesome. It really is. It's and awesome. so it's great when you get, you allow yourself to be stretched and you step out and try something to do something that you know is way beyond you. Yeah. <laughs> strengthens yeah. your faith too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and there's, so we're just like 10 people away from 10,000 subscribers on this channel. Let's go. And uh, so guys, if you're watching and you want to get plugged into a church, I'm going to have a link down below for Pure Heart Church. You guys got to come check it out. <laughs> if you're on the West Valley, there's the Peoria campus. If you're um, off of 43rd in uh, Thunderbird, there's the Glendale campus. That's right. And, I mean, your, your guys' church is continuing to blossom. Just, it's, it's amazing. We've been blessed. Yeah, it's been it's been an exciting ride. We moved on that campus in 2005. I think we've had like 19 straight years of of growth. It's been holy, it's been great. holy. yeah, it's been great. So it's where were, great. were we? So uh, and I love it because it's like a it's a there's no new home starts in that area. It's it's like what church growth people talk about. Like it's a no great called a no growth area. Yeah. So I just love the fact that we've got really? to break that mold. Yeah. Oh so, dang. Yeah, it's just it's exciting. That's so, awesome. And then I love what's going on at our Peoria campus. Pastor Pat's amazing over there. And, yeah. you know, it's uh, we, Pastor Pat, um, African American leader who, um, a couple years ago, we had a conversation. I said, man, I have this campus that was given to me, given to us. And would you be interested in, you know, I'd like to give it to you. Would you like to, you know, utilize it? Let's, let's partner together. Yeah. Yeah. And so their, their congregation was probably 98% African American. And, yeah. and I said, um, let's just, let's do something that's not happening in our, in our state and our country very yeah. much. Let's, let's come together, man. Let's, let's show unity. Let's model that. And he came back and he goes, you know what? I want to become part of pure heart. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, wow. well, that's not what I was asking, <laughs> you know, but you don't have to go that far, but yeah, I just, I just so respect him and he's such a humble man. And but when you you go to worship over there at our Peoria campus, you better put your tennis shoes on, man, because you're gonna do some oh, running. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna oh, be yeah. moving. You're gonna be moving in a groove. So and we, we're uh, uh, something that's coming up. Pretty, uh, we're, we're looking at. We're talking to this with this one guy who does um, videos, like Christian videos, yeah. and we're looking at renting or getting some permits and stuff for the park that's next to the yeah. Peoria campus. It's a great park. And doing the Re Jesus Revolution and doing some worship out in the park. It's a great idea. So, so yeah, we might have Let's something go. coming up well, that we could do. We'd love to partner with you on that. Let's go. Let's <laughs> unite and do it. And uh, give a message uh, of salvation, some prayer, and and bring people in. Like, I, I can't, After I watched that movie, I was like, I told my wife, I said, we need to start a revolution. There you go. <laughs> I'm go, like, man. let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Don't quit. Don't get. Don't grow weary in doing good, Jacob. Stay, stay, and stay in bold. Stay in the game, baby. Stay in bold. Stay in the game. Yeah, the the enemy loves to get us to quit. That's his whole goal. Mm. Rob us of joy and get us. Try to get us to quit. Yeah, yeah. You know? So just keep pushing forward. I see that. Well, Pastor Dan, I want to thank you for being here. And if you have, if somebody's watching right now and they just need a pastor, a leader, someone that is is doing something like we're something new and they're going in and they're they're having all kinds of struggles and everything. 
what would your word be to an someone like me, an up yeah. and coming uh, uh, preacher, evangelist, uh, worker of God? What would be your your word to them right now on the pod? To a person who's struggling in ministry, yeah, they're yeah. up and coming, up and coming, and just bloom where you're planted. Mm. That's the biggest thing. You be faithful to where God has you right now. Yeah. Um, that's that's the story of my life. I never applied yeah. for a position. I never, you know, tried to promote myself. I just was asked to do Sunday. I was asked to do attendance in a Sunday school class for junior high boys. I was 20 years old. Really? Wow. Played softball with this guy on the church softball team, and he came up to me and says, man, I got the rowdiest junior high boys. I can't, I don't know how to, because <laughs> would you come and just help me in my class? Just be, a, basically, I was a bouncer. Yeah. And so um, the Lord had already put on my heart about a month before that, a, a bit of a burden to do ministry. Yeah. You know, so in my mind, I'm thinking, man, I'm going to teach, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and so the first opportunity God gave me was to take attendance at a boys' Sunday school <laughs> class. I was like, I was praying for something bigger, a little bigger than that, Jesus, you know? Um, but I was faithful in that moment. And about three months in, every week I was there, just, you know, building relationships with those boys and hanging out with those kids and doing what I could do. And, and um, about three months in, the teacher got sick. Oh, and he wow. called me, he says, dude, I got the flu so bad. He says, I cannot teach tomorrow. I need you to teach. Well, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> So I put together this little devotion. I have no, I can't even remember what I talked about. Something about yeah. King David and Saul. I can't, I can't, I don't know. <laughs> David and Saul's relationship or something like that. I, and I did the message. And then at the end, I gave an invitation for salvation. Yeah. It had never been done in our Sunday school classes. We just didn't do that in this little Bible church. So I gave an invitation and to receive Jesus. And two of the roughest boys in that class raised their hand and gave their lives to Jesus. Oh, dang. And I was done. They, um, the kids left the class. And I just started weeping. I mean, I'm literally weeping. Yeah. The next day, I got a call from a little church across town. And they said, hey, we are we need a youth pastor. And would you be, we heard you're in youth ministry. Oh, wow. <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, yeah. I've been taking attendance for three months, and I just pre- did my first devotion. I had two converts, so yeah, I'm a pastor now. And I went over, there. two kids showed up the first night to the first youth group. They were 30 minutes late. One of them was the associate pastor's son, and his dad said, get up to the church. The new youth intern is there. <laughs> you need to get up there. So I sat under a tree for 30 minutes waiting for any students to show up. These two kids oh, showed dang. up. Before we knew it, I just started loving those guys, pouring into them. And within within two years, um, the youth outgrew the church, outgrew the, I mean, it just took off. Yeah. So was faithful in that. Then... I got more. I'll tell you another podcast the rest of my story. <laughs> okay. But I just, that's the story of my life. I've just been faithful with where God's put me. Yeah. So then he moved me to this camp in Prescott, Arizona, and I handed out volleyballs to people, to, and ran camps for a while, youth camps. I was faithful with that. And yeah. then I got a call to be an associate pastor to church. And I did that. I was faithful there. And then that pastor was asked to resign, and they asked me to be the senior pastor, wow. interim, interim senior pastor. And I was faithful in that. And here I am today. Wow. So just wow. wherever God has you, no matter how just small, be faithful. don't despise small beginnings. Yeah. Just be faithful with where God has you right now and give it everything that you've got and wait for him to lift you up. Uh, like that. Because when you try to force like the doors that. open, you try to make it happen. You get that resistance. It doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't mean we don't dream. We don't, yeah. you know, don't believe. We don't develop ourselves and grow and study and learn. But I, there's just something to be said for... Blooming where you're planted. Yeah, yeah. Giving it everything that you've got. Because yeah. if you're faithful with little, you can trust it with much. That's it. That's it. So and don't something, give up. something you said that has always impressed me about every time that you preach, it's always impressed me the way that you will give a salvation call. Mm. No matter, I, it hasn't failed every time I've heard you. And, and, and people always come to salvation. It's the most beautiful thing I, I get to see when you when you go out and preach. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a gift. It's it's God. Yeah, you know it's God. It's it's it. He has given me that. I'm a I'm a pastor evangelist. Yeah, that's what I am. It's an interesting combination. You don't see that very often. <laughs> but um, I have a shepherd's heart, but I also have an evangelist heart. And I heard a guy say years ago. He said uh, he, the story he told. He said this this evangelist came to this church. This and he was gave an invitation and like three people came to Jesus that night. And the pastor said to him, he goes, how do you do that? He says, I've been preaching here forever and no one has received Jesus. No one, no one. 
Like, I, I don't know why. What's, what's wrong with me? And he, he asked this question. It's such a great question. He says, when you give an invitation to receive Jesus, do you believe that people are actually going to receive that invitation and, oh. and respond? And the guy goes, he looks at the ground and he goes, no. He goes, I always believe somebody's going to respond. Yeah. And when I heard that the first time many, many years ago, I put that in my heart. And so when I give an invitation for Christ, in my heart, I'm expectant. Mm. I give, I start the invitation expectant. Mm -hmm. I give the final, you know, call like, hey, you know, raise your hand right now. And I just believe. I yeah. just, in my heart, I go, I know somebody's going to respond in this room today. Yeah. And so, my, and so anyway. That, that, Side note. that reminds me of Pastor Kirk Hodder. He, he, uh, something he always says that I've adopted. He says, uh, God will always meet you at your level of expectation. Yeah. Level and, of faith. Oh, man. And I love yeah. that. <laughs> I love it. You got to be bold, though. You got to be willing to just, you got to be willing to ask. And I know sometimes we, as, as pastors, we look around a room and go, I know most everybody in here. We, we're not sure or whatever. And you just got to give it. Yeah. I, and we give an invitation every service, every single weekend. Yeah, yeah. Every service. No, I love that. Online services, on-campus services, Peoria, Glendale, everywhere. Um, we're not going to have a weekend service without giving people the opportunity to come make the most important decision of their life to say yes yeah. to Jesus. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. That's what's feel, feeling us for this uh, this event coming up in March. Let's and go. all the people that are coming, we're inviting, we're asking them to bring somebody that doesn't know the Lord so they can hear the the gospel message for the first time. It's good. And uh, and I was even, it, you know, it's funny. I was I was talking to a guy earlier, and he's like, "What are you going to preach about?" And I'm like, "I'm going to preach the gospel." You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and condense it into a story form. But I'm going to preach the the passion of Christ. Hmm. And uh, I said, regardless if you've known the Lord, everyone needs to be reminded of that's right. What our salvation is, why did it happen, and what did it accomplish? Because I I really believe that I never want to graduate beyond the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hmm. I feel like everything stems from that, yeah. and that's the centerpiece. It has to be. Paul, I preach Christ and Him crucified. <laughs> and then that's the, you we know. We just make it so complicated, yeah, don't we, as pastors, yeah. so we, as teachers and leaders? We make it so complicated. Just got the simplicity, yeah. the simplicity. The beauty and simplicity of the gospel. And, and, you know, and I think that's really what the world desperately needs. They know they need something. They just don't know it until they find it. Yep. And and if we present it the simplicity of the gospel, something clicks and they're like there it is. Truth. Great. And I love that you're asking people to bring someone because it it we gave up years ago. Not gave up. We we gained more wisdom. We just don't do much marketing anymore. We don't oh, we don't okay. do mailers, we don't do stuff like that anymore. It's just yeah. we, the churches used to spend so much money on that type of promotion and for us, we know this. It's all about relationship. Mm. We just challenge our church family every weekend, bring somebody with you. Yeah. Don't come alone. Yeah. Especially at Easter, Christmas. I mean, we just tell them, do not come. I'm not doing whatever, 12 services or whatever. <laughs> I'm not doing this to hear myself talk <laughs> all weekend long. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, but we're doing this because we want people who are far from Jesus to find him. Amen. And so, yeah, bring somebody with you. It's that invitation. That invite is the most important. That's the most powerful way. Yeah, yeah. You know? So good job on that. I well, love thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well, we're coming up on we an are, hour. Are we? Have we have we been talking for an hour. <laughs> That's so. You know, when you when you're having a good conversation, time just starts flying. <laughs> but uh, oh, I love it. Uh, I'm honored that you came today. I'm just uh, honored to have a ha have you in my house and in our studio and to do this uh, this podcast. And I'd love to have you back on and. Uh, just keep sharing your heart with our audience, and and uh, what what we we really uh, desire for Ignite Fire is that it's a platform that 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 God could use this as a platform to promote the kingdom, and we want to just elevate the body of Christ, the church's unity, and and preach that salvation, that simplicity yeah. of salvation, so people can come into the kingdom of God. You know. Well, I appreciate your encouragement. Every time I'm around you, you encourage, you're kind. I love kindness. I well, think kindness you. is so rare in our world today. And, you know, the thing, I, one of the things I admire most about you, Jacob, is that you, you know what you believe. You're a strong, yeah. <laughs> you're a strong, you have strong conviction, man. You, you, you do. 
but yet there's a tenderness about you. Well, thank you. And I thank think you. that, you know, we can be strong and kind at the same time. Oh, yeah. We can. Oh, and, yeah. I, and I admire that about you. It's rare in our culture today. So you know what you believe. You are passionate about Jesus. You're passionate about the truth. But you also are, are full of grace and love for people, and you're super kind. Well, thank you. And I admire that. Thank well, you. Thank well, you for your kindness towards me. Well, thank you, Pastor Dan. And guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button. We'll have some information on the link down below. And join us April the 23rd on the field. You're not going to want to miss what God is doing here in Arizona. And I'm going to say I say this on uh, most of my podcasts. God is rattling Arizona, and Arizona is going to rattle the nations. So Let's go. One, more, one million people for Jesus. Let's one go. One million. Let's see an Let's awakening do it. in this city. Oh, let's start a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Until next time, God loves you. We love you, and be blessed.